What's going on today? I'm gonna to be stitching this broken walnut slab to show you three innovations from Shaper Origin that I really like, even though I was super skeptical at first because they costed a lot of money and I don't like spending extra money on things I already spent a lot of money on, but they're actually super nice. This is not sponsored in any way. I have no clout to actually get Shaper to sponsor me. So this is just my opinion. And the first one of those innovations is the Shaper plate. So I'm gonna show you how this works and why I like it when stitching together this um, broken walnut piece. And then I'm gonna show you also Shaper Studios and their feature Auto Pass. Now I'm gonna get the pricing thing out of the way right away. I don't love that it feels sometimes like Shaper Studios is falling into that pay to play world because in their Shaper Studios, they're charging $99 a year so that you can use the design software. Now, with that said, it's actually pretty nice design software and it works well when you need to stitch these things together. You don't have to learn any kind of like CAD software or anything like that. You can just do the work, which is kind of what you want to do, especially as a hobbyist woodworker. So that out of the way, I don't love that pricing model. Additionally, with AutoPass, they're charging $199 for a one-time fee so you can buy it so it's an upgrade on your shaper. It makes the origin so much better and I highly recommend getting it. I think Shaper Origin should have just included that because it's such an important upgrade that not doing it seems cheap to me. This, the last thing, is something that you could probably build on your own, but it wouldn't be quite as precise as you want. But it's a huge innovation for me and I really like how it works. I've been using this to, again, stitch together this walnut slab and it works super well. So in this video, if you stick around, I'm gonna be showing you my workflow to stitch on here and make some interesting stitches. Obviously you could hand cut, hand carve bow ties into this, not a problem. You can of course do that. I'm gonna make this kind of, I'm calling it my crop circle um, stitch on this slab. And I think it's a really good illustration of what the shaper can do because I'm not sure how else you would make a circle stitch on a slab like this. So it just offers one of those innovations. So to give you a good idea of what I'm gonna stitch here, here is a really bad crack in this piece of walnut. Um, this is actually what it's gonna look like afterward. You can see this over here, but this needs some stitching right here. So the cool thing about the shaper plate is first of all, it fits anything that's uh, about six inches by you know approximately four and a half inches. So you have a good decent amount of working space here. But what's super nice is it basically creates tape where the, you would have had to prior put tape onto your board or your slab or whatever that is. Now, if you have a huge slab, that's not a big deal, but this allows you to not only uh, put that stitch in here, but you can actually move it around. So if I do it once here, I could move it down here, do it again, do it again, versus having to lay tape out in different patterns all over the place and then wasting all that tape and going from there. So let's take a look at how to design on Shaper Studios. So what I'm gonna do is go to design and then a new design, and I can choose a circle. Now it defaults right to one inch, so I'm gonna reset that to three inches. And then you can see it's pretty quick. It just applies to the page and I can, I'm gonna move that over and I can use that as the cutout uh, for what will eventually be the circle, but I need to create a quarter inch ribbon if that makes sense. So I need to duplicate this and then with that duplicate, I can um, basically duplicate it again, resize that circle and make it um, wide enough that it will basically create a quarter inch ribbon because that's what's ultimately gonna go into the recess in the slab. So what I can do is choose a rectangle, set that to a quarter inch, which is the size of my bit, in case you're wondering, well, why a quarter inch? That's the size of the bit that I'm making that recess, which is the left circle. And I can use that quarter inch square just to double check that it's exactly that thickness. Because even though in my head, I should just make it three and a quarter, because you have two sides, you end up having to make it three and a half inches for that extra circle. Now, what I really like about the program is it's not just creating like empty circles, but when you click there on plan, it shows you how it's gonna ultimately cut out the circle or cut out the recess in the case of the less left side circle. So I can rename it <clears throat> to kind of circle design and then I can uh, set 
how deep I want the cut. Now, the one on the left, I'm going to set it to 3.34, I think is what I measured it to using the calipers. Um, and then I can also set the bit size so I know exactly what um, kind of width the hole will be. So I need to change that bit size to a quarter inch. And then that's on the outside. So that creates that outside depression. Uh, but again, really easy just how quickly that works. So then I have to go to the um, one that'll cut that circle, the ribbon, I think I've been calling it. It's kind of like a circle donut. It's called the donut. Anyway, so to make the donut, I need to cut basically along the outside of um, the right one and then the inside of the center circle, if that made sense. So by clicking on it, of course, I can set that again to a quarter inch and it shows kind of the path that that will take. And then I can also set the depth. Now I want this depth to be deeper because I want to cut through my piece and I want that piece to be thicker than the recess that I'm putting it into because you want to be able to cut off the excess and then sand that excess down. So it's really important to make sure that your sizing is correct so that you'll get two pieces that do agree with one another. And if you followed along with that correctly, you're gonna get a donut that can fit right inside the donut depression. The reason I like that is it's a lot simpler. They used to use uh, InDesign, used to use something like InDesign or some other kind of CAD software to make an SVG file. I need to kind of program it. This is so much easier. So for me, it's worth $99 of a year. That's not that bad for software that works really well. I can even go to this review. They have kind of this new uh, 3D rendering review form. So it's super cool. I like that. I think it's worth paying for. So one of the cool new additions they have here is when you add to scan, you don't have to recreate your workspace. So I can just lift this up, find the previous tape, and then add that picture. Say finish. And you see that I have a new piece of wood in there, but the same design I'm going to use. So it's marked right there. So now, since that's all in the same place, I can now cut, I can check that I am for sure avoiding everything I need to avoid, perfect. I can go to cut. I can say I want this one to be an outside cut. And I know it's 0.4, I have auto pass, good to go there. Or one of the reasons I really like this auto pass situation is that it's so much faster to make a really clean, precise cut. You used to have to do a circle, change the dimensions, change the depth, do another circle, change the dimensions, change the depth. So you'd have to do that multiple times. Here, it just automatically goes through your different passes. So you're more inclined to not over stress the motor because you're going to let it choose how deep it goes and it always finishes with a nice like finishing pass so you get a really clean final pass so let's see how it did here so i can move this aside so that cut out the piece really well now what we're going to do is cut the matching pattern over the crack on the slab and we're going to use again plate and just swap it over there and instead of setting up tape and doing all that kind of stuff i can just use this basically same plate with the same pattern and knock out what i need to make this work so now i've moved the shaper plate and the shaper to the slab and i'm going to cut that recess that's going to accept the circle to make that kind of crop circle stitch look All right, there we go. We now have a beautifully cut hole in our slab matching the one we had before. And it should match this piece. I need to break this out of here. So I'm gonna pause the video while I break this piece so that we can add it in here. All right, so one thing that I just experienced that you wanna be aware of, and it's more just my being silly and not actually thinking through the depth thing. So. If you're cutting out a ring like this, make sure you cut just shy of the depth and then you can kind of break it out on your own. So that's why those calipers are really important. 
What ends up happening otherwise is you cut that inside ring, it's no problem. That outside ring you cut through, and as soon as it's loose, it just starts jarring in there. So just be thoughtful with that. I ended up cutting it from a new piece of walnut, which is great. So then once you have that, you can set it here and we can give it a little gentle persuasion. I've already had a glue. There we go. And then we can use a saw to cut that. And then I even have a second one for later. All right, so that looks good. I can sand that out. And that looks pretty darn good. To make my inside circle, I wanna use the cutoff from what I just had cut. So what I can do is I can jump into the Shaper Studio and make a new circle. And in this case, I'm gonna go new design. And I wanna create a circle, pretty simple circle. But I need to make it the diameter of this. So if I use my calipers, I know that this diameter was 2.43.3. So I'm gonna say 2.433. There we go. So 2.433, I'm gonna call this um, inner, oops, I'm gonna call it inner circle. And now I can put that aside. I can go to my shaper origin. Okay, then I'm going to import the inner circle. I'm going to line it up as close as I can. That's what I like about it. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to create a pocket cut. And I think it's important to note the frustrated slash angry facial expressions I have. Don't let that be any dissuasion from you thinking about getting a shaper. I just apparently look angry. All right, so then at that point, we have our piece, we have our hole. It looks like it's a good fit. Drop a little bit of juice in there. Yum. And then give it a little persuasion. And then just cut that top piece away. So all we have to do is sand that up and with a little creativity, some thought, you can create a really unique slab stitch that would be really tough to create otherwise. And with the Shaper Origin, with Auto Pass, with the plate, it just allows you a little bit more versatility than you might often have in a hobbyist shop. So again, it's expensive, it costs a lot of money, and this is in no way sponsored, but I am a fan of how it all works together, and I'll be using it a lot in the future. I tend to use my Shaper with most projects, my Shaper Origin with most projects, and I really like how it lets you create something unique that other people might be like, wow, that's really cool. The plate then adds that adaptability and repetition that I think it was lacking before. So I'm a big fan of maybe purchasing those additions if you already have a Shaper Origin or if you're thinking about it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate if you subscribe, if you like all that stuff, and I will talk to you later.